Okay. Yeah. Okay. Started their cloud cloud recording now, uh, so we should be good to go. Um. All right. Cool. Um. Let's start with just a quick sort of check in on where everybody's at and what we've been up to. Um. Uh, I've just been sort of recovering from uh, Barcelona. Um. I guess we haven't really done one of these though since Barcelona started. So um, a lot of stuff shifted around in Barcelona. Um, not necessarily because of any activity that was there, but mainly because like me and Eric had some time to sync up and I had some time to sync up with other people. Um, so that's making its way into the planning stuff now. But um, sort of TLDR on it is... Um, Unix v2 will use the composite stuff, which changes the timeline that we need for the composite things. Um, and a lot of the sort of, that means shifting some uh, resources to Rust and WebAssembly um, for effectively the rest of the year. Um, that's the sort of big change. Oh yeah, and um, Hannah's coming over to do the selector stuff as well as GraphSync. Uh, the protocol work, which frees up Eric to spend more time on schemas. Um, and the priority for schemas in general is just like bumped way, way up. So, so schemas and code gen in, in Go Up Here Prime have all just kind of bumped up in priority. So that's my update. Uh, Eric. So. Um, yeah, basically that. So. It seems like, so we got some really cool um, positive feedback about a bunch of the stuff we're doing from the IPFS camp gathering. Mm -hmm. um, the, some of the most recent drafts of the schema um, of the selectors system have been tossed out in front of um, people in the community at the IPFS camp. And these specs were based on the schema system as well. And um, somebody was able to look at the latest draft of that selectors PR that I put out and in its schematic form and make sense of it, which honestly like completely bamboozled me in the most positive way possible. Um, I didn't actually think this was very approachable and apparently it was because over the next couple of hours that person came back to me with a couple of questions about like, is this a valid selector? Does this do what I think it does? And in the case of those persons of this, I was like, yeah, actually. So um, that was really cool. And I think the selector specs are kind of on track as a result of these forms of feedback. Um, and I think some of the other folks, like the Filecoin guys, seem to be looking at doing a bunch of the Filecoin spec work that they're on in the next couple of weeks in the form of IPLD schemes. So we have quite a lot of attention um, to that channel so that's kind of exciting and it's going to put a lot more pressure on us to like deliver the thing and do succeed at user goals in the next i don't know time t so yeah i'm, I'm really excited about that and also it, it does seem to feed into a lot of like schemas will help people interact with this system so it'll be really exciting to do more on that front and I'm trying to spec out a lot of code gen stuff in the last couple of days as well. So hopefully that continues to go well. Cool. Awesome. Rod, you're up next. Um, okay, so <coughs> I <coughs> I'm sick again. Um, <laughs> so I um, mainly was working on spec stuff, data structure spec work. I've got a second pull request in for uh, a vector type. Um, got some changes I need to make to the hash map. Um, I, I, I haven't really figured out a, a path to landing these things. Um, it, it seems that they need more engagement to really to to land them, um, but um, I guess I'm 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 okay with them sitting open. But um, I don't know. I, the hash, I don't. Know. I feel like the hash map one can land. We've we've talked that one to death a little bit. 
there were some there were some comments um, last week from Jeremy that um, that need some experimenting. So um, and then and then there's also that oh that conversation about context and parameters. Um, I don't know, it's just I, I get so frustrated with that conversation because it's I know that. Um, I think I understand the the desire behind it, but it's like we we don't have tools to do this stuff right now. I just want to do I want to do stuff with these data structures, and uh, um, you know I can't do stuff with them with this idealized version of of how they should all fit together when we don't have the bit the bits to do that. That's what it seems to me anyway. Um, and so it's another one of those discussions that I just wish would get resolved somehow so that I can. I can be told how best to use these things. Um, so, um, <clears throat> by by parameters, do you mean the parameters that get encoded into the root block, or parameters that get passed into the function? Um, <clears throat> well, both, because the, the the comment from Jeremy was about the parameters not being there at all, um, and that was the conversation you you, you sort of half dropped into because I. I I mentioned the work you were doing, but um, that that if I interpret the comment right, was that we shouldn't need the parameters in the root block at all, because that should be in the context of this thing. So you need you should you know the fact that you got here should means you should know what this thing is. Um, no, yeah, yeah, okay. So I think I think two different things are getting confused there. So you have you have one thing which is like the definition of the data structure which is effectively like the same thing for every one of these hash maps, regardless of what those parameters are, right? So this is just like, hey, this is the, the name of this thing. And you know, at some point in the future, here's like the WebAssembly function to actually implement it. But like for now, it's just literally like, this is a special thing, <laughs> um, this is its name. As far as like the parameters for the actual algorithms, those should be encoded, encoded into the root block, like always. Well, I, I mean, that doesn't, that comment to me doesn't sound like so you need to go back and look at that comment because that's not what I'm hearing from there. Okay. But anyway, anyway I, without without a, a concrete proposal for change, I'm, I'm, I'm I can't do anything. Okay. With, um, okay. <clears throat> um, well, hold on. So, do we? I think that we have consensus, like between the three of us, that like the parameters should be encoded in the root block, right? Param like algorithmic parameters, right? Eric, do you agree? Maybe. I think I understand the the communication bug, at least. Okay. Uh, I might be <coughs> trying to explain it right now for good use of time, but okay. I haven't, like, haven't pre-buffered this. I'm just going to... Okay. I was just thinking if we could... Because like, I'd like to <laughs> merge the spec in draft form and then iterate on this particular problem. Um, totally agree. Extreme yeah. agree. Um, uh, even if we just like add a note that like, hey, this section's under discussion or whatever, I'm adding a bunch of those to the the composite spec too. The, or just like we're still actively discussing, blah blah blah, um, just so we can get something like in. Because ideally, I'd like like to just get it merged so that we can have these discussions as separate PRs rather than like this one big PR that's getting kind of hairy to to really get through. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, you know, if the implementation that you that you've worked on has the per these parameters encoded in the root block, I would just put that in the spec, put a note that like, mm -hmm. hey, we're discussing this still, and then merge it. And then, if Jeremy specifically wants a way to not encode the parameters in to like infer some kind of default behavior, then like, he can start a PR for that, or somebody can start a PR for that, and we can discuss it that way. Would be like my ideal solution to this. Um, yes. Okay. I mean, I don't. Okay, I mean, if someone has a language for that, then that would be good because otherwise, otherwise, it's like we're discussing this, but I, I don't even, I, I don't even fully understand why we're discussing it. It just doesn't. It's like what's, what's the problem with that? But anyway, um, I <clears throat> so I, I also started to, um, I'm interested in using these things to do some practical stuff with, and I was looking at the late last week. Oh, no, actually. And yesterday as well as looking at um, the question of 
um, temper. Uh, so when you're using these things and doing heavy mutations, and you're you're creating lots of intermediate blocks that you're going to throw away, um, and potentially having very large data structures, so you can have potentially a lot of these things. I was looking at the question of um, uh, block storage when you're doing these mutations, so that you can uh, both throw away and collect later state uh, efficiently. Um, what does that look like? So I was just, you know, just playing with that little piece of the puzzle um, to see if there was a an obvious, obvious efficient way to do that. Because um, I want to, I'd like to start using them um, for some ideas. Um, but yeah, that, that's a rabbit hole I don't want to go to too too far down because there's there's easy um, there's there's easy versions of that that we can use. Um, but anyway, um, and then the other thing was to, um, on my plate was coming up <laughs> to spend some more quality time with Go. Um, that's really the main thing on my plate, I think, right now. So that's me. Cool. Hey, Johnny Quince, how you doing? Howdy, y'all. <laughs> Howdy. How y'all doing? Good, good, good. Um, do you have any specific sort of questions or feedback for us today? No, mostly I'm just lurking. I've been working a lot with mm -hmm. um, the DID specification, so the DID, decentralized identifiers, and we're using a lot of uh, matrix parameters. And since my IP ID solution is built on IPLD, there's a lot of um, IPLD selectors that would be um, abstracted and use dereferencing with these matrix parameters in a URL syntax that actually would ultimately be uh, IPLD selectors underneath. So I'm keeping a close hmm. ear to the ground as far as where you got, what direction you guys are going so I can abstract it into be an interoperable standard with other DID methods. Cool. Yeah, Eric, you, you pushed, or is that still a pull request? Some changes to the selector spec recently, right? <clears throat> Yeah, the, the latest of selector stuff is in the PR, in the specs repo in the IPLD group. I think it's called selectors 41 because that's roughly the version number I'm on in my internet. <laughs> <laughs> saved you all from mostly zero through 40. I think maybe you saw that <laughs> and then skipped ahead to 41. Uh, anyway, the one PR that's open is the latest that I have on my clipboard. Yeah, I think um, we were playing around in Barcelona about abstracting that into just basically a CID that is the JSON that did, you know, of the uh, expand all, et cetera, JSON. But then it's actually uh, in a properly formatted URL is to separate it with a matrix parameter um, uh, reserve name equals the CID. And, uh, and that makes it interoperable. I'll give you, I suppose, here's an example of what we're working on with the, uh, the did method. If, let's see, maybe I need to turn off my IPFS node so I can. Interesting. So that is actually, uh, the semicolon is actually is what Tim Berners-Lee originally uh, identified as being matrix parameters and you actually can have multiple semicolons. And so, and here the the you the did is uh, the f the the first three segments separated by s full colons. So did example and that made, uh, identifier. Mm -hmm. So that's the did with a semicolon, and then the matrix parameters after it um, identify the content. And and this goes back to a, a blog post by Tim Berners-Lee back in the 1990s, um, which there can be multiple semicolons that separate matrix parameters. And you were saying the CID that you want to use is going to be the selector encoded into a block? Or no? no, no, that would just be oh, the okay. URL. So the fully uh, oh, okay. formatted URL would be, um, uh, here, actually, I'll give you an example. Um, okay. So let me uh, give you, give me, let's see. Um, I'm not going to find my presentation. Uh, 
but it's just a way of uh, abstracting it. And the the JSON syntax, the JSON, um, which is the IPLD selectors, would be um, Seaboard serialized and turn into a CID. And then that basically that would be the value um, that you'd put after the equal sign. Interesting. I'll have to dig into that at some point. Seems like something you can do. I'm indifferent to whether or not it's a good or useful idea, I guess. <laughs> Outside of the scope of the things I've spent brain seconds on lately. Yeah, it's just mainly like a, let's make sure that the selector spec doesn't veer off in a direction that becomes impossible to do any of this. It's, it's currently being mainly driven by the, the graph sync stuff. So um, it's quite a different use case. I just want to make sure that they, they still um, interoperate properly. But if um, you want a hash of the gener of the like of the AST of the selector, then that's, yeah, that's a thing. I'm going to have it. I, but I think you'd need some metadata in the pointer to it, right? To know that it's a selector to execute. So you'd rather put that like, it would either be in the DID curl form that says like, you know, selector equals this CID, or it would need to be a CID with some metadata in it. That, that, like we, I like we've been so talking about. That whole selector, or sorry, um, that whole context thing. If the semantic context of DID implies that this string of the hash in this position is a selector, then. Right, right. Yeah, that would that's, work too. That's a, uh, that's kind of scary, but yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, just it's, like, it's not upgradable, right? Like uh, that's the only, the only uh, problem. But, yeah. but, you have, but you have that service type people of hub in there, it looks like. So like, you know, if, if you, you, you have these other parameters in the DID, you could tweak to say, oh, you know, when you have this, it's not a selector or whatever. Okay, that makes sense. And that yeah, reminds me that I need to kick off the discussion about fat pointers. So, um, fat pointers is another possible solution to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just need to get that started. So. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Um, I'm good. Um, anybody else have anything that they want to talk about in the last eight minutes here before we? Okay. I think the other thing that I've been working on is doing uh, the JSON schema work for the did methods. And I think um, what might be really helpful is, and I've already got an issue filed, is we, if we can get IPLD submitted as, an I, as a valid scheme name for a, a fully formatted URI, then you can do some pretty cool stuff with um, schemas. So actually like you can have self-describing schemas with um, uh, that without a authority. So I'll give you a, an example of the um, a schema. Can you see that all right? That's pretty small. Uh, sorry. I have, I have a feeling in, in parallel to this train of thought that we're going to want to talk more about the context concept as well, because that seems like it's been at the root of a bunch of issues recently. But, um, so context as far as JSON LD context or context yeah. for the LD? Yeah, uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, context <laughs> as it's been discussed in basically the specs PR 130 and some of the HAMP specs 
it's it's a word we've been throwing around in some discussions lately that has not necessarily reached total agreement on its meaning yet. So that is the nature of the beast. Yeah, it seems like there's there's two sort of separate contexts, right? Like there's um there's the hey, I already know what this thing is from somewhere else, right? Like um I mean like the fat pointer discussion gets to that. But then even within the discussion, when you hit like intermediary nodes, you have a context that you carry over from prior nodes. Um, and yeah. Yeah, I don't know if either of these map anywhere near the JSON LD. But no, I right. gotcha, all right. Ironically, context. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, so this example is just a, the JSON schema for the verifiable credentials stuff. And in the ID is actually, is if it's probably formatted IPLD uh, syntax, then actually it is, uh, e even though it's the, this, it doesn't exist in this, um, when you dereference it and actually get this from IPLD, it's um, at least resolvable. Hmm. Oh, does this that. does the scheme infer any kind of transport? No, uh, yeah, J JSON application JSON. So sorry, sorry, that's the that's the MIME type. Yeah. Um, no, so this is actually okay. the identity, the ID of the of the field um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's resolvable. So this is a okay. I can give it a random number, a UUID. But basically, uh, since, I mean, this is resolvable to a DAG Seabor uh, uh, serialized to JSON, it, it self-describes, it, it says this, this is the ID of this thing. And so when you're doing um, uh, definitions, and so down below here, there's, I'm referencing here, yeah. So in the reference section here, I'm referencing the definitions up above, um, and, and JSON pointers, uh, the hash symbol references this document, but there's no reason why this can't be any valid URI. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So right now the uh, version seven of JSON schema uh, uses this syntax, but if IPLD were actually a valid uh, IANA scheme name, then that would be a, a, a rather than uh, have this ID here, you could actually have any URI. I just, I like the only thing that I wonder about is that um, unlike other scheme names, there's no transport inferred by IPLD. So like it, it, it's an identifier, but it doesn't necessarily how to tell you how to get it. Whereas most schemes that I can think of would, would be implying how you go and get the data. Um, we, we, like the yeah, the scheme actually gives you some kind of context on how to get it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like a, a difference to to think about. Um, interesting. Whereas like IPFS actually does infer you know a, a set of transports to go and try to resolve. Um, Mm -hmm. But like in Jason's schema, the idea is not, you're not supposed to necessarily be right. able to resolve it. So a lot of people right. actually do right. resolve it. And if you put Jason schemas, even in like this uh, VS uh, Microsoft code, visual code, um, those do try to actually go out and go to a, hit a uh, HTTP resource and actually download them. Um, but mm -hmm. they're not technically supposed to. Interesting. What exactly is the point of the schema system where I can't resolve what it is supposed to describe? mean yeah it's supposed to be that uh you have all your schemas and you can reference your different schemas a lot of them actually if, if you have them in the same folder they're supposed to resolve you know it, with ref, uh, re relative ref, uh, na naming um but I, I i think using this iplD solution might be more elegant and simple and uh, self-describing than standalone without having an authoritative source it sounds like an IPLD based resolution system inside this other schema system would behave well, 
but it would be a good actor inside of a system which permits both good and ridiculously comically uselessly bad <laughs> actors in the same system and i kind of don't know why Ooh. i'm time thinking about that how often so i know that some SEMA systems are actually going and resolving all those roles like you said um I haven't messed with any of the JSON LD stuff, but back when I actually tried to do some RDF stuff, um, it got to the point where you would just use them as string identifiers. You wouldn't actually go and try to resolve any of the URLs um, once you mm -hmm. put them for different schemas. Um, is that still the case in JSON LD most of the time? Like people don't actually go out and get the, the schema yeah. definition for yeah. So yeah, so the URI for like over here in the other window. So this um, mm -hmm. yeah, right, right. ORG credentials V1 that mm -hmm. is resolvable, but it's resolvable in um, if you just we get it um, here. Actually, yeah, I think I have it or curl it. Um, mm -hmm. It is uh, W3C. The headers actually are wrong unless they fixed it. <laughs> uh, so the headers are like octet. Octet okay. stream. Yeah, so content type octet stream. So it's not JSON. So it, 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 and if it were application JSON, then JSON LD parsers would be happy about it. But this is just uh, raw octet streams. Okay, so the, the reference schemas for JSON LD don't implement themselves correctly at W3 org. That's right. great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now. Stop.